Greetings, royal family. All right, I'm back. Uh, this time, Love & Hip Hop Miami. Why, why the heck not? Why the heck not, right? I'm playing catch up here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we're still at uh, Briscoe's welcome home party, right? That's where they left off last week, it seems like. And they're still there. Everybody's being extra, extra ratchet for whatever reason. So uh, MJ, you know, he's angry. He just went off on Julian about Ju Julian is Amara's manager, I guess, if that's what you want to call him. He just went off on Julian, you know, about Amara's checks not coming in and about Julian's trying to slide in Amara's bed one drunken night when they were at Vegas doing work or well, whatever, however the story goes. So Amara, she's over in the corner freaking out, hyperventilating, um, because she did tell MJ this information about Julian sliding in her bed when he was inebriated and touching her leg. She told MJ this in confidence with the hopes that he would not repeat this. So now Amara's freaking out because now this is gonna create tension between the client and the manager, I guess. Could you can you consider Julian a manager? Anyway, so we see Hood Brat. Hood Brat is telling Suki Hana that Nikki, which is Trick's ex girlfriend, recently, uh, was talking about her. So Suki confronts Nikki. That's pretty much how that goes. Shay. Because she has no camera time, she has no storyline, she's trying to get some shine, and she barely even knows Nikki. So she decides to jump in. She claims that she does not like seeing someone get picked on, and she relates to the underdog. So she's taking Nikki's side, and it's just like, girl, you just, you just take whatever they throw at you, huh, uh, Shay? Anyway, so Shay and Suki get into it, and in true, Shay fashion, she tears off an art, a piece of uh, um, Suki's outfit, like a piece of her fabric. You know, she always has to have a souvenir. She had a piece of somebody's wig one time, and she just, just childish. Like, you don't even know this girl. What are you, what, what are you fighting for? What, why are you sticking up for Nikki? You don't even know Nikki. What if Nikki was wrong, as wrong as two left shoes? And you just, girl, Mona, what did, well, she got to work hard for that money. It is what it is. So we see Prima Donna meeting up with uh, Miami Tip. Seems like they were good friends. Um, Prima Donna was born and raised in Miami. Born and raised in the county of Dade. Okay. So she pretty much worked her way up, got herself up out the hood, moved to Atlanta, and never looked back. And Miami's Tip whole deal was, you know, we were good friends. You just left me behind. You left everyone behind and I thought we were friends. So that's the long and short of that. And she said that, uh, listen, I can totally understand. Um, Prima Donna just says that she was focused on getting out of Miami and building her business. You know, once things started taking off for her and she got into some money, she just did not even look back uh, on the city of Miami, which is where she came from. So isn't that the objective of getting out? You know, sometimes you just get so caught up in building, building, building a legacy for yourself, building a name for yourself. It's easy to fall off with people. And sometimes you have to put, you know, you gotta be laser focused. So it means, yes, you're gonna sacrifice time with family. Yes, you're gonna have to sacrifice time with friends. It happens. But the good thing out of all of this is Miami Tip seems like she has some sense Aside from her working with Suki, trying to get a record deal with Suki, aside from that, she seems like she has sense and she understood. She was able to articulate herself and Prima Donna apologized. So I, I thought that was a, that's the type of stuff that I like to see. Not this, not this other stuff. Anyway, so we move on to Amara and MJ, all right? So it's the next day, you know, um, MJ is just still not over the fact that that altercation took place that he initiated because no one told him to confront Julian, but hey, he feels warranted for some reason. So Amara's trying to talk to him and, and MJ says that he's been burning inside, you know, because of uh, what happened the night that Julian got drunk. And Amara's pretty much mad again that he brought this up. And she says that Julian made a mistake and Amara is just focused on her career and she doesn't want to mess anything up. 
as it pertains to her business. You know, this is her money. This is her bread and butter. She doesn't want to mess anything up and she doesn't want to sever. She doesn't want any tension between the business relationship with her and Julian. But Amara, I can respect that, but it doesn't seem like you have much of a relation, a business relationship uh, between you and Julian. Like it doesn't seem like there's much there. Trina tried to warn you. So she's still between a rock and a hard place. And you know, MJ is telling her that she needs to get rid of Julian. All right. Saw that coming. And he also speaks French because he said, we, you know, you need to tell Julian that we want out of this contract. Now I done told Amara, Amara watch out for that MJ. And I do understand that him being her man, he wants to look out for her. Um, but he has no business in your business as it pertains to your career. That's, that's just my opinion. Nope, 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 nope. Newsflash, MJ, you are her boyfriend. Uh, you're a ninja living in her house. You are not her husband. You have no rights to legally to anything that she does as far as a business. You know, you didn't build this with her. Um, and you, you're not in the, you know, you, you wasn't with her shooting in the gym. Isn't, isn't that how the saying goes? So I don't know. I, I just think that Amara, Amara will learn. I don't think Amara is as passive as she can come across, but I just think that she's being very careful, especially as it pertains to severing ties with Julian. I think she knows she has to do it, but she's just going to do it her way, which got to respect it. All right. So we see a uh, tip. And Miami tip and we see Suki. So they're in some crab shack restaurant. They're talking again. Suki is tips artist. And for whatever reason, Miami tip thinks that it is a good idea to represent Suki. Um, after the fight, the fight that happened at Briscoe's party, they just ruined Briscoe's coming home party. Did they, didn't they? Just ruin the man's party. So uh, Suki reveals that her phone is gone. We come to find out that Nikki has it and she's meeting up with Shay and they're being petty and they have her phone. And Suki's like, whoever has my phone, I'm gonna beat them up over a phone that's probably leased or finance. We move on to see Trick Daddy. Um, he says he don't want Nikki anymore. Good for you, Trick. He says that he's still in love with Joy. Um, but Joy, uh, Joy just wants Trick to move on with a nice woman. Um, and he actually, she actually was hoping that Trick and Nikki could get back together. They, they met up by Trick's house. They're outside talking and Joy's like, you know, maybe you and Nikki can kind of get back together. You know, I think I kind of like misjudged what Briscoe said. So Trick is like, nah, I'm over it. You know what I mean? I, I'm totally, um, over it. So that's that on that. So it, they're still friends, I guess. They're still legally married. There has to be some sort of benefit, whether it be health insurance or monetary benefits as to why they're legally married. Because if memory serves me correct, I remember Joy was so distraught and she was so, so broken apart because she could not afford to get a divorce from Trick. And y'all remember that Trina handed her an envelope with the exact dollar amount that she needed to file the papers for divorce when she had that car wash. Yeah, here we are. And they're still married. So we move on to see Amara at her lawyer's office, as well as M MJ is there as well. Of course, him and his top hat, they're there. So Julian is saying that he wants 100% of Amara's publishing. <sighs> Cause Amara's uh, lawyer, reached out to Julian's legal team or his lawyer, and they're trying to figure out how they can basically sever ties professionally. But Amara's uh, lawyer is telling her like, Julian wants 100%, the nerve, 100% of her publishing. This is how you know, Amara, that this guy was never your friend. The nerve, the nerve of him. What makes him think that he's entitled to even 50%? He didn't write any songs, to my knowledge. He wasn't out there performing any songs either. So Amara, she's pretty much heartbroken, you know, because she thought that Julian was her friend and she said she can't believe this and how could he do this to me? And MJ is just sitting there, you know, consoling his woman. He's rubbing her shoulder and you can tell that he is, he's in his glory because he's like, yes, she's going to get rid of this slime ball. Yes, we want her to get rid of Julian, but not because you told her to, MJ. And I liked you in the first episode, but I'm looking at you sideways. We move on to Miss Pre-Madonna. 
So she is having a relaunch party, honey. She has her waist trainers on deck and her models. She got her crock pots, crock potting. She got her seasonings all displayed at this uh, venue. So the theme is everyone is supposed to wear white. Trick, he didn't participate. He had on a white tee with a brown hoodie and, some, and a brown hat and his goals. He's just like stuck in his ways. And Prima Donna came out in this money green gown, you know, looking all fabulous, you know, representing money. So I, I like Prima Donna this far. I do. I like her hustle. I like what she's doing. And, you know, uh, Trick was just saying that Prima Donna has come a long way. You know, she came up out the hood and she really made something of herself and the venue was nice. And she had all these associations with these upper echelon people. So it's good to see you know, black girl magic at work and she is doing the damn thing. So you go on girl. So we see trick and Briscoe, they're talking. And again, trick mentions that he's over Nikki. So Briscoe is approaching him, telling him like, you know, those rumors that's going on about Nikki. I didn't smash trick says, listen, you can smash whoever you want to smash. I respect you for coming, coming to me as a man. I ain't got nothing to do with Nikki. But he did tell Trick, though, that he went out on a date with, uh, with Joy. And Trick's like, hmm? He didn't say much of anything, but you can tell he felt a little sting because I don't know what he has for Joy. I don't know if it's love. I don't know if it's... We, he, we know he loves her, but their relationship is, is it's whatever. Whatever we see this week. All right? So while uh, Prima Donna is giving her speech and addressing her guests in her money ring gown, okay? Long sleeve. Um... We see a truck backing up, making a beeping noise, backing up. And Prima Donna's like, am I tripping? Like, why is there a truck in my venue? So we see uh, there's um, a video, like a projector screen on the side of the truck. And we see Jocelyn Hernandez referring to Prima Donna as Miss Piggy, saying that I have a gift for you and I have a message for you. And she opens the back of the truck and there is a... Was it raw? I guess there's a big pan, like a huge baking pan with a pig on the, in the pan. Jocelyn, let me, let me tell you something, sis. I don't like that. And I think you should be very careful um, because the girls might not like, you know, the message that you're trying to send. I did mention this in my previous review. We will just have to see how that works out for Jocelyn, but I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling Jocelyn referring to her as Miss Piggy and yeah, 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 maybe innocent. Yeah, it's always innocent until it's not innocent. So if we see Prima Donna beat the brakes off of uh, Jocelyn, I wouldn't be surprised. I doubt it because what I do notice is Jocelyn does not film with anyone except for Trina, Trick, her man. And we did see her film with Joy when um, Trina, Joy and... Uh, Jocelyn were sitting in like a lounge, like a hookah lounge of some sort, and they were talking. So it doesn't seem that Jocelyn is going to be mixing and mingling with any of the other girls. Uh, I don't think that that would be wise, especially with people like Hood Brat, Suki Hana, you know, Nikki. I don't think she's going to mix and mingle with those girls because it'll be just nonstop fighting. And I guess that's the image she's trying to clean up. But sis, I'm going to need you to chill. Jocelyn, um... I'm going to need you to chill on the referring to Prima Donna as a pig. I'm, I'm, I'm going to need you to chill on that. So we will see what happens um, next week. What's supposed to happen next week? I don't know. Somebody's supposed to fight. Oh, Trina. I think Trina's getting into a fight with someone, but we don't even know if that's what we're going to see. You know how they do with the previews. So ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this episode of Love and Hip Hop Miami season three, episode four, something like that. Thank you for kicking it with me. It is Wednesday. I am behind, so I'm pumping out content, pumping out content. Ladies and gentlemen, before you go, please hit the thumbs up button. Like the video if you enjoyed the commentary. And also drop down in the comment section. Leave a comment. Let me know if you saw this. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you don't even watch the show or if you don't care. Whatever it is, as long as it's a respectful comment. So be sure to like and comment before you leave out the dough and make sure your notifications are on. If you're already subscribed, make sure your notifications are set to all. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button. We would love to have you here, a part of the royal family. So I'm signing off for now, but I'll be back soon. Until next time, peace.